Hi guys, it's Claire Matara from the Amazon in Peru and um, it's the 28th of October 2020. I want to follow up on the uh, other video that I made a few days ago about the uh, Kali Yuga and the end of the Kali Yuga and um, how we can move forward into the future. Um, I'll, I'll bring up something about my master as well again, Mehababa, my beloved Mehababa. Um, uh, what I'm saying is uh, just what I've gleaned over the last 45 years while I've been working with Baba and studying with Baba. Um, he died in 1969, but of course his spirit is very, very strong and um, anybody who has a wish can reach out to him and, um, and find his spirit and connect to it. So uh, it's, it's like the Christ within. Um, Meher Baba gave us several teachings that were kind of really important for me. One of, the, um, one of the important things for me was that I always really, really loved Jesus Christ, and I still do. Um, and I uh, felt very, very drawn to Meher Baba, but at the same time I wanted him to, wanted to know if, uh, how, how this related to my love for Jesus Christ. So, um, Meher Baba said that uh, he was the avatar. Now, avatar in this day and age can mean any old thing. Um, since Meher Baba declared that everybody's taken it up as a, as a word for computer and for everything else. But um, in the old sense, it is the actual incarnation of the Divine Self um, uh, come to the earth for uh, uplifting us and teaching us. And Meher Baba said that um, he comes back every 700 to 1400 years. And that is because, um, because of our limited understanding, we distort his message. We make sure that um, the message is usually not completely um, uh, brought forward to other people because we don't fully understand the teachings of the Divine Self. Um, and usually uh, somewhere along the line the ego gets involved and uh, the doctrines start happening and, uh, and then everybody's fighting about what he said, what he didn't say and what's right and what's not right. So I think it's uh, always important to go back to the basics of what you really feel in your heart. And I feel with Meher Baba, that this is another drawing I made of Meher Baba. I made a lot of drawings of Meher Baba. Uh, this is a very, very nice one where he holds the earth in his hands and um, that is to, um, to make a, a story about how we are always looking after, looked after by him and how uh, there's always a spiritual hierarchy that is looking after us. And uh, Meher Baba said there's always five perfect masters and, when, uh, and they are taking care of the earth and everything that happens. Um, they are not always known. Sometimes they are, but they're not always known. Um, so they have a job on the inner levels and they are basically God conscious. They've, they are people who have become God conscious. So they are God men. Um, they are men become God. Uh, and they are, um, they are always keeping things somehow under control. Um, we think that everything's out of control, but actually, according to these teachings, it's not out of control. Um, well, if it was really completely out of control, my face would be sort of over there and over there, and everything would not make any sense. But things do make sense, and there is beauty in this world, and the beauty talks about the harmony of God. And, uh, and so, I've done a lot of drawings of Mehababa, but the thing is that um, in the Baba community, I am not really accepted because my work with ayahuasca and because I've always been a little bit of a rebel. But that doesn't mean that I can't say anything about what I've gleaned from Meher Baba and I hope it's interesting to some other people. What I liked about it is that Meher Baba accepts uh, all different religions. He says that all religions eventually lead to God and eventually lead to self-realization. The main thing is you have to be serious about it and you have to really um, in, um, immerse yourself into it and really uh, call with all your heart to the divine um, teacher that has actually given you those, those scriptures. So then we have uh, Buddha and, and Muhammad and Jesus and Rama and Krishna and there have been many, many more according to Mahabhava. So um, here I made a drawing of that. This is uh, 
At the back is Krishna, here, Krishna, Buddha, Jesus, Muhammad, and Mehababa, and that's Mehababa's um, feminine self that is the beloved Meha Mehara. Um, I still met, I met Mehara in India before she died. Okay, that's uh, the idea. They are all pictures of Mehababa, where he actually looks a bit like these different avatars. And um, that's because I feel that deep down inside ourselves, we always, um, we kind of remember the Christ. That we, we remember the face of Jesus. We remember what it looks like. We know when we see this person, we, we know, we feel it in our heart. And it's not something that you have to, you know, work a lot with your head to just kind of work out is this true is this not true but still you know after Mehababa kind of jumped into my heart literally with a huge dream where I where I was basically captured by him and I'll talk about that another day um, after that dream I I knew he was in my heart but I had to kind of reconcile it with my head so then you know many many years uh, at least 20 years of reading everything he said and, um, and comparing it to the Bible, comparing it to uh, different other things that I knew. Uh, and in the end, Baba always showed me that, yes, he was the Christ and yes, he knew what was going on. And so I accepted that because um, I'm a pretty mental person. I have to kind of work it out for myself. And I, I think that everybody has to work it out for themselves. You cannot um, believe in Jesus on someone else's word. You really, really have to feel it in your own heart. You have to realize it as, wow, this is something different. This is something else beyond the normal self or the normal appearance of things. So anyway, um, what Mayor Baba said is he comes back every 700 to 1400 years. And um, he also said that he was um, he was um, I made some notes. He came at the end of a cycle of cycles and that this was a very big event and that that's why his manifestation would be the biggest. So if the other um, if the other calculations of the Vedas and for instance Yukteswar, Sri Yukteswar, um, uh, who also made a, uh, a calculation of the Yugas, which is much shorter than the Vedas, which are very, very huge. Um, if we just let that go for a little while, and if I take what Baba said and not worry about all the other things, then um, I would accept that Baba was came at the end of the Kali Yoga, or that he's finishing it. Um, and that might not happen within the next three years, it might happen within the next 50 years or something like that. I'm not really sure, we don't know what time is for God. It could be in a huge, huge amount of time, or, or it could be shorter time. And uh, and then also, um, there are these stories about uh, ascension um, and that we are going to be in a, in a higher frequency for about 3,000 years. Uh, that's because there seems to be a huge photon belt in the universe that's, that we are, the Earth is passing through at the moment. And so that actually brings an upliftment in consciousness. Everything will be affected. Um, it's just that our minds can be a little bit stuck in the old ways and so it's very hard for us to um, accept new ideas um, for most people anyway and uh, and for me too I had to kind of really check everything out before I could accept it. Here is um, another little schedule that Mehababa had made. Um, it was painted. Um, let's have a look. Um, yeah, here where the where the colored gases come out, this is like this is like God, the beyond beyond God, and this is where the gases come out, and it's like God says, "Who am I?" And then the consciousness starts to evolve, and so there's gases, and there is stones, stones and metal, and there is vegetable, and there is. Um, there's insects and reptiles and then there's mammals and then we get into humans um, birds here animals animals here birds animals mammals and here's humans who keep reincarnating for a very long time because they are the ones that are going to realize their divine self 
Um, and then here they are going on to the inner plane. So that becomes involution rather than evolution. There's evolution here, there's involution here. So um, people go on to the inner planes and get different powers until they've come here to this uh, chasm, this abyss. And that's where they have to completely let go of their ego and their sense of individuality. And then they go into the divine there and they know that they are God and consciously experience themselves as God. So um, anyway, my uh, uh, there it is. <laughs> uh, the cam camera, I had to adjust the light meter to the photo and to my space. All right, so that's how far I got with that one. And um, um, yes, so uh, we, we can actually have faith and confidence in the fact that we're always somehow in a grid of divine uh, guardians, divine help, um, even if it doesn't appear that way and if it appears that we are um, being dragged through huge uh, problems and uh, attacked and our, our um, autonomy and individuality is being uh, besieged by everything. All right, um, so that's where I keep it at the moment and let's see how that goes. All right, God bless, all the best for now and see you soon. Bye bye.